This is section 8.1, an introduction to vectors. Vectors, many physical quantities such as speed, can be completely described by a single real number called a scalar. This number indicates the magnitude or size of the quantity. A vector is a quantity that has both magnitude and direction. The velocity of a football is a vector that describes both the speed and the direction of a ball. So a vector has both magnitude or length and it has direction. So these two vectors are in roughly the same direction, but this one, the first one, let's call it vector A, has a bigger magnitude than vector B. And this could be like pushing a table across the floor. If you push a little bit, you're going to have a certain speed, and even though speed wouldn't have much to do with it. But if you pushed harder, then uh, the table would move faster because of more force. So this could represent the force being uh, exerted on some object. State whether each quantity described is a vector quantity or a scalar quantity. A boat traveling at 15 miles per hour. Now that's just going to be a scalar because it's just one number. The quantity has a magnitude of 15 miles per hour, but no direction is given. Speed is a scalar quantity. A hiker walking 25 paces due west. Now that has magnitude and it has direction, so this is a vector. This quantity has a magnitude of 25 paces and a direction of due west. This directed distance is a vector quantity. C, a person's weight on a bathroom scale. Now this has both magnitude and direction. The direction would be down. This is a, this is a uh, vector. Weight is a vector quantity that is calculated using a person's mass and the downward pull due to gravity. Acceleration due to gravity is a vector. A car traveling 60 miles per hour, 15 degrees east of south, that has magnitude and direction. This is a vector. A parachute is falling straight down at 12.5 miles per hour. This has magnitude and direction, so this is a vector. Let me get that on screen. And one see a child pulling a sled with a force of 40 newtons. That's also going to be a vector. A vector is a directed line segment. The initial point is called the tail. So when you draw a vector, this is the initial point. That's called the tail. And then uh, we have a terminal point called the head, and we usually put an arrow on that end. And it's denoted by, this could be vector AB. It could be vector A, or you could just say A for vector A. Let me get all this in the screen here. Standard position, initial point is at the origin. Direction of vector is the directed angle between the vector and the horizontal line that could be used to represent the positive x-axis. Magnitude is the length of the vector. Magnitude is the length of the vector. So we could have a vector over here. And if we put that vector in standard position, it means we have the same magnitude and the same direction we just put that, the, 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 the tail, um, on the origin. So we would draw the same length and the same direction. The direction of a vector can also be given as a bearing. A quadrant bearing phi is a directional measurement between 0 and 90 degrees east or west of the north-south line. The quadrant bearing of vector v shown in, as 35 degrees east of south or southeast written south 35 degrees east. So this right here is uh, 35 degrees east of the south line, or we could say southeast, but the way we write it is right here, south 35 degrees east. A true bearing is a directional measurement where the angle is measured clockwise from north. So we start at north, that would be zero, uh, and then we go clockwise, unlike the unit circle where we'd go counterclockwise, um, the true bearings are always given using three digits. So a direction that measures 25 degrees clockwise from north would be written as a true bearing of 0 to 5 degrees. Use a ruler and protractor to draw an arrow diagram for each quantity described. Include a scale on each diagram. So here we have A equals 20 feet per second at a bearing of 0, 030 degrees. So we can say that maybe uh, one millimeter equals one foot. And then we have to measure over 30 degrees from north. So I have the protractor here, and I'm going to mark 30 degrees from north.
Let me get the microphone over here. There we go. So 30 degrees from north, I'm going to mark it right at uh, the 60. I'll make a mark there. And then, so I have it, uh, I have it marked. And now I need to make it 20 millimeters uh, because that's what I set the scale at. So right here, maybe I'll put the 9 right there. And I need 2 centimeters. So right there, that would be the vector right there. Uh, let's look at letter B. We have 75 pounds of force at 140 degrees to the horizontal. Let's go with 1 millimeter equals 5 pounds. 1 millimeter, 5 pounds, and I need 140 degrees. So I'll put the protractor, mark 140. That's right there. And I need to go how many? Uh, 15 millimeters. 15 millimeters. So maybe I'll put the 8 right there, and uh, there's 5, 10, and there's 15 millimeters right there. 30 miles per hour at a bearing of south 60 degrees west. So west of south at 60 degrees. Let me get that on the screen there. So 30 miles per hour at a bearing of uh, 60 degrees west. So let's make a one millimeter equal to, um, let's go with one mile. And I need to go west of south 60 degrees. So I need to turn this upside down and I need to be on the west side of south 60 degrees. So maybe I'll go over here to the 30 right there. All right, and then I'll line this up maybe with the 5 and I have to go 30 millimeters. So there's 10, 20, and 30 millimeters. There's the vector right there. In your operations with vectors, you will need to be familiar with the following vector types. Parallel vectors have the same or opposite direction, but not necessarily the same magnitude. I can figure A, B, C, E, and F. So A, B, C, E, and F. These are all considered parallel uh, vectors. Equivalent vectors have the same magnitude and direction. In, figure, in the figure, A equals C because they have the same magnitude and direction. So A and C are equivalent vectors. Same magnitude, same direction. Opposite vectors have the same magnitude but opposite direction. The vector opposite A is written negative A. In the figure, E is equal to opposite of A. So E and A are opposite vectors. Orienting. In an orienteering competition, Tia walks north 50 degrees east for 120 feet and then walks 80 feet due east. How far and at what quadrant bearing is Tia from her starting position? Let's let one millimeter equal five feet. And I'm going to have to go east of north, so we'll have to go east, and then we'll have to go due east. So I'm going to start on the left side of the paper. So maybe we start, I don't know, let's start right there. And we need to go 50 degrees northeast. So let's mark that, or east of north. So 50 degrees east of north. That'd be, uh, I need to go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. That puts me right there. And I said one millimeter is five feet. So if we take 120 divided by five, that is 24. So uh, 2.4 centimeters. Let's go line up with the 14 maybe. One, two, and point one, two, three, four. About right there. There's the first vector. And then uh, we walk due east for 80 feet. So if we divide 80 by 5, that's 16. So I need 16 millimeters. So we have 5, 10, 15, and 16. Just a little bit more. That's about right there. And it says, how far and at what quadrant bearing is Tia from her starting position? So let's draw from beginning to end a vector. And we'll get its measurements. So there's beginning to end of the trip. And if I line that up with 13, it goes from 13. We have uh, 10, 20, 30, let's say 38 millimeters. 38 
And then we'll multiply that by 5. So 0 for 190 feet. So we know it's 190 feet. And now we need the direction. And it's going to be uh, east of north. So if I line that up, it looks to be about, let's see, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, say 64 degrees. So 64 degrees, and that's going to be east of north. Find the resultant of each pair of vectors using either the triangle or parallelogram method. State the magnitude of the resultant to the nearest centimeter and its direction relative to the horizontal. So here we have V and W, and we need to add these two together. Let's get some measurements. Let's measure V. V looks to be right at let's say 20 millimeters or 2 centimeters. So we're looking at uh, 20 millimeters. And let's get the angle. And I'll try to get this as horizontal as I can. Uh, looks to be about, oh, let's say from the horizontal, uh, about uh, 43 degrees. So 43 degrees like you're doing the unit circle. This one, the W, is straight north. We'll call it straight north. And let's get a measurement on it. And it looks to be about, oh, maybe uh, 12 millimeters. So 12 millimeters. And uh, we're, we're going to call it straight north. So let's pick a point here. Maybe we pick the point right there. And uh, I need 43 degrees. So let's measure 43 degrees. One, two, three. 43 right there. And I need it to be 20 millimeters or, or 2 centimeters. So there's 1, 2, right there. And then I have to go 12 millimeters as straight north as I can possibly get this to be. So I'll go straight north, 12 millimeters, 10, 12, right there. And I'm going, I need the result. So we'll draw the result in from beginning to end. And this should be uh, 2.9 centimeters. I have the answer there. And it's almost exactly 1, 2, 2.9 centimeters. And this should be at 61 degrees. So let's get the horizontal. And uh, I did a pretty good job here, I guess. Uh, it's very, very close to being 61 degrees. Let's look at 3B. That's inches side. We'd like to use metric. This one looks to be 2 centimeters long. So let's go with uh, 20 millimeters or 2 centimeters. And B seems to be, let's go with uh, 10, 15, how about 16 millimeters. And we need to get some angles here. Uh, you know, it, and if what would help is if you take it after you measure the length, uh, we can extend this, and then that makes it easy to do the measurement with the protractor. So I'll try to get this as horizontal as I can. And it looks to be right at about, let's say, 22 degrees. So 22 degrees, and let's extend this one. That'll make it easier to measure with the protractor. There we go. Got to turn this one upside down. And this one, let's call it, uh, ooh, let's line it up a little bit better than that. Uh, how about uh, 21 degrees? So if I took uh, 360 minus 21, that's 5, 10, that's going to be 9, 3, 339, so 339 degrees. All right, so I got I to move to the left. So I'll start over here. I got to move to the right, I mean. Uh, I meant to say I'm going to start over on the left-hand side. I'm going to try to keep it on the screen. Maybe we start right there. Uh, I need to line up 22 degrees. There's 22 right there. And uh, I need to make this 20 millimeters long, or 2 centimeters. So 1, 2, 2 centimeters right there. And then uh, I need to measure 339 degrees or negative 21 degrees. So we'll try to line up 
negative 21. That's about right there, let's call it. And uh, I need to go 16 millimeters. 16. So 10, 15, 16 millimeters right there. And we need to go from beginning to end. Beginning to end. That's the vector we're looking at. And let's see, that's supposed to be 3.3 centimeters. That is pretty close. So that's 3.3 centimeters. And then we need, uh, we need it to be 25 degrees. So let's see if we can get it to be 25. And not even close to 25. Uh, there's no way that that answer is correct because if we're going to go, if this is 25, 22 degrees, and we're, we're decreasing that angle, uh, that's certainly not going to be correct. We're going to say it's wrong, and we're going to say it's about four or five degrees. So let's call it, uh, this should probably be about four degrees.